Hey there, everyone. If you're just tuning into my channel, I am Ann Julie Johnson. I'm an encaustic artist and I do a lot of experimentation and show you different ways, different techniques of working with encaustic wax to paint, to do artwork and mixed media. If you've been here for a while, thanks for sticking around. You might recognize this piece. I worked on it a few years ago and I've been kind of going through a lot of my pieces recently, finding the ones that felt unfinished and really trying to work on them until I, I feel that I've gotten it right. And this one, it felt sort of unfinished, but not, not completely. So I did just a few changes to it, but I really wanted to work with this new tool. Um, it's actually not really a new tool. I've had it for probably about a year, but I've only used it a few times and um, I wanted to try it with my bubble technique. This, uh, this piece, what I do is I, I do drips of wax on the surface and then I carve around them and fill them with oil paint. So you can see kind of the finished look there. But the way I've always done it in the past is to just take my brush, drop spots of wax on it, and then fuse them to the surface. And that can be hit or miss. Um, you have to be really careful when you do that because if you hold it on there for too long, the wax will m completely melt together and you'll lose that bubble shape. So you have to really fuse it really carefully. And I've started working with the stylus and I realized that if I use this to create the bubbles, I wouldn't have to fuse it because it melts all the way through the wax. It fuses as you're adding the wax to the surface, which I really, really like. Like if there's any way I can avoid fusing, uh, that was going to be how I was going to do it. So in reworking this piece and using the stylus, I wanted to use the form of a circle. I love this feeling of containment and what that symbolizes. I'm, I'm really trying to put a lot of meaning into the pieces that I'm working on now, not just having them be about experimentation. reworking it like this, um, it was a little bit of a challenge. So I, I started off kind of trying to just add some bubbles to the, the inside and the outside of the circle, but it was looking too busy and I didn't really like it. So I decided to kind of try to see if, if I could get rid of some of the, to kind of define that that circle line a little bit more and so I got rid of some of the stuff around it but then as I was doing some repair work and kind of adding these this wax to the right side here I realized that the white that I was working with was a little bit more pigmented than normal and so when I tried to blend it in and I and I fused too hard right there and just I was like ugh. I have to redo this whole thing. Like I'm just making all kinds of mistakes here. I'm fusing too hard. I'm this, I think had a layer of clear wax underneath. And so when I fused it that deep, the, the clear kind of came up and started blending with, and it was just not looking that great. So I decided to just take out that corner and just redo it. And of course, then I had to do all the corners. So sometimes Sometimes that is necessary when you make a mistake in encaustic. You can always fix it, but some fixes are easier than others. And this one was, I thought it was going to be easy at first, but because of those few extra things that happened, I, I had to go back and, and just redo more than I was thinking I would have to. But I did get to experiment a little bit more with the stylus because my wax hadn't melted completely. I didn't have my brush there because the wax was still kind of hard on my palette. So I used the stylist and, and uh, it took forever. As I've been working on this piece, I've had to redraw this circle several times. When you fuse, it's a very fine line when you fuse encaustic wax, which you have to do between every layer to make sure that your wax is one solid painting and not just multiple layers because those layers will eventually start to chip off and will 
can crack and, and your painting will be damaged. So fusing is very important, but it can be tricky when you're working with a lot of details. But again, this is always an option. Um, scraping down to the wood and reapplying the wax is, is actually a fairly easy process. And sometimes it's, it's easier to do that than to do something maybe a little bit smaller or less drastic. But I'm really trying to sharpen up this line. I actually found this cord at Lowe's. Um, I use a blowtorch, uh, not all the time. Sometimes I use a heat gun, but the blowtorch is a little bit faster, especially if I'm trying to heat the wax up quickly so that I can scrape it like this. Um, but it was getting too hard for me to hold the canister in my hands. I, I am in the beginning stages of arthritis and it's, it's sometimes my hands flare up. And so the weight of the canister is too much for me anymore. So I found this cord at Lowe's. I, I'll put a link in the description uh, so you guys can know what I'm talking about. But it screws onto the canister and it's got a cord so I, I don't have to hold the, the canister itself. I can just hold the, the head part, the torch part, which is much, much, much lighter. It's very helpful. I didn't quite find the same color of blue that I originally used because I mix my own colors and it can be really hard to kind of match the same color that I've mixed before. Um, so this blue is a little bit darker. So I was trying to spread the bubbles out a little bit and add these darker blue bubbles, not just to the edge, but to the center as well to kind of make it more, to blend it in more. But this stylus is just perfect for building up these bubbles. I get a really good height and I know that it's fused because I can, I can stick the stylus all the way down to the wax and it melts all the layers together. I'm able to be precise and I don't, I don't get um, random drips all over the place, which I usually do with my brushes. So if you're trying this kind of bubble technique, which I've, I've shared several projects, um, and I can link them below as well, where I do this bubble technique, but using the stylus, I definitely recommend using the stylus. It's, it, it, it will probably take a little bit longer than just, you know, what I would probably do if you're just starting out is adding drips to the surface with your brush. And if you, if you're going to be doing that over a, a wide area or adding a lot of bubbles, um, doing the drips with your brush and then going through and, and um, detailing them with the stylus one by one. And then carving around them. Now because I added so many new bubbles, I had to add some more oil paint into the lines around them. I didn't show myself carving those. Um, I wanted to keep this video as engaging as possible and not get into too many of the nitty gritty details. One thing I will mention too with this is that since I worked on this a while ago, the oil paint I had added in the first go around had completely dried and was unaffected when I added more oil paint and wiped it away. And I think I like that effect. You can, you can tell that there are two layers of oil paint. And I will say that that would be a struggle for me because I, I struggle with patience and letting this oil paint dry, it takes a long time to, for it to completely dry. Like we're talking maybe 
one or two weeks for those lines to get to get totally dry. And uh, waiting that long before applying another layer of oil paint would be very, very difficult. Um, but I think that having that effect where the colors don't blend together and you can get sharper, crisper edges uh, on the colors, you get some blending uh, with like the new fresh stuff you're adding, but not of the layers underneath. I think it would be worth it to try that and to get that effect. And sometimes that's what it means to be an artist, to, to, uh, to get those, those looks that you want and those effects that you, that you want is being patient and working with the mediums that you have. I did have a hole in the center where I put my needle so that I could draw the circle um, and I needed to fill that in. So I saved that for last because I had to redraw that circle many times and I wasn't sure when I was finally going to be done drawing it. So that was my very last step was filling in that hole with a little bit more blue wax and then adding a little more oil paint around that. One of the things that I did differently this time when adding the oil paint is I usually try to remove as much as possible and just leave it in the lines. This time I, I kind of used a stencil brush to kind of add some clouds of color in a few different places. It's a little bit harder to see because I did remove quite a bit of it at the end still, but there's, there's a few little clouds of color on the surface that I could have removed with my linseed oil, but I, I didn't. I kind of left those colors to kind of stand out a little bit and add more of these, these sunset, this sunset blend of colors within the circle and keep the outside of the circle as white as possible. But that's pretty much it. Um, let me know if you have any questions about the stylus, uh, um, anything specific that I, I maybe didn't cover. I would love to answer your questions and to get your feedback. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to hit subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.